Yes. Well, when you were asking us questions, it's more like you really like pull us into like honest or just details of what we were. Talking. Well, I'm trying to get you to be honest too. A lot of people are reticent to say what they really what they really want to say. I mean, and that's what part of what I'm trying to get you to do is try to get you to be really honest, really honest. Start to say all the terrible. Here's what I'm after, okay? With the ranting especially, this is what I'm really after, okay? You know that voice that goes on in your head all day long, that voice, that little voice in the back of your head that goes on all day long and says all that horrible stuff? Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's the real you. And that's what I want. When I can get that voice unedited to come out and say all that horrible stuff that you keep editing out, that is your comic voice. That is your, because that's the real you. What you're giving us is a social facade. So people will talk to you. Because if they really knew all that was going on in your head, no one would be around you. <laughs> Am I correct? Yeah, exactly. But you see, stand-up comedy changes that. This is a context. Stand-up comedy is a context at which that becomes acceptable. To say all the horrible stuff you think all day long. See, stand-up comedy flip-flops the real world. All of your faults are now your strengths. Things that, 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 that you dislike in the world are the things you want to talk about. You see, the way the things that criticisms of people have about you are now subject matters for comedy routines and jokes. You know, the problems in the world is now the fodder for your routines. It, you know, everything that was bad before is now something really positive for you if you're willing to accept it, buy into it, and join the dark side of the force. You start, <laughs> but you have to first <clears throat> accept yourself as you really are. The real you, not that social facade. You're giving us a social facade. And by the way, in the real world, keep that fo social facade so you'll have friends. Okay? <laughs> but in stand-up comedy, the closer I can get to that voice that you carry in the back of your head and you start to say it on stage is when you're going to find yourself starting to get funnier and funnier and funnier and more original and more original and more original as a comedian because no one has that voice that you have. The challenge is for you to own it, first to own it privately and then to own it publicly and then to start putting it out there publicly. Yeah, are there a few things you're going to want to hold back? Yeah. But the further you go, that's what Richard Pryor brought to stand-up comedy. That's where he changed stand-up comedy. He took stand-up comedy to an intimate level no one had ever gone before. Lenny Bruce got us to talk about what was on our minds. He talked, of course, he talked about politics and racism and sex and drugs and all those kinds of things. And nobody talked about that in the 50s, early 50s. He was talking about those things, okay? Pryor came along and went, here's what's going on inside of my life, and here's how I messed up, and here's how I intimately see the world and react with the world. And he took us into a, his own heart attack. Okay? He took us into his drug addiction. That's amazing. Those are amazing routines. Because that's his internal voice externalized. And, it, and when I can get you to do that, and that's why I'm trying to build a safe place here for you to start to take those risks and start to say that <coughs> stuff. Stop editing all of that stuff. In the real world, you got to keep it that way. You can't say all that stuff in the real world. But we're here. When you're here, you have to come into this magical world of stand-up comedy. In this, in this room where, I, where no one's going to put you down, and you know what you're going to discover? And here's the spooky thing. Here's what's weird about it. You're going to say this awful, terrible, horrible thing, and you're not going to find, you're going to be afraid that people will dislike you. And what you're going to discover is that you'll have peers. <laughs> and the people going, oh, yeah, me too. Oh, God, I think that same thing. Oh, my God, I didn't think anybody thought that. You see, because likability in stand-up comedy does not come from being nice. 
Stand-up comedy is not a nice art form. If you think you're going to get up here and be nice and sweet to everybody, you're entirely mistaken. This is not a nice art form. You're not nice to people. You really aren't. Likeability does not come from being nice in stand-up comedy. It comes from vulnerability. Where people go, wow, me too. God, I feel those same things. I've been, I'm too afraid to admit that publicly. And when that happens, people then start to fall in love with you. They start, you know, they start, they empathize with you. They, they sympathize with you. They become on your side. You start getting fans and stuff. And that's what you're after in stand-up comedy. And that's what you're after is that voice, that internal voice coming out. And that's where we start with a rant. We start with a rant to get you to start used to that and stuff. Anybody have any questions? You have an assignment for next week.